Hello, Anthony. Hello, Armin. Hello from Australia. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. I know we don't have a lot of time, but uh, it's an absolute pleasure to see you. Uh, and before before we get started here, let's go ahead and pose for a photo real quick. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. All right, got it. Enjoy your chat, guys. Where in Australia are you, Anthony? I come from Melbourne, which is the southern part of uh, yeah, the state of Victoria. Seven times, so I know exactly where Melbourne is. Uh, well, I, do hope, I do hope that you get a chance to get back here, Armin, and we can shake your hand because you are an incredible actor. I'm so pleased that I'm able to talk to you. I I wanted just to share with you, there are two, two times that I felt that you went above and beyond your role as an actor um, in DS9. It was it struck me when I wrote, when I uh, watched it, it was the episode when Odo has been removed from DS9 because of the morphogenic virus and he's having to be taken away to be cured. And you make a snipe little comment, I'll be running this place before you know it when you get back. And um, he said, he says to, you said to him, so you are coming back. And he says, you can count on it. And that beautiful, beautiful, lovely, brotherly um, look in your eyes where you say, and you look at him and he comes up and you say, I will. And as it, and it's that 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 app, you you really know that Quark and Odo have a special relationship, and and no one could have communicated that last I will, other than you, Armin. You did such a brilliant job, and I'm, I watched that scene so many times, and I thought he he proved that Quark was more than just a uh, dodgy little guy around the sides. He had a heart of gold, who actually cared about people, even if he got upset with them, and you did that all through a mask. Uh, the final scene, Armin, is when obviously in All Things Left Behind, when Odo is leaving and he doesn't say goodbye to you, but you say that beautiful line, that man loves me. Can't you see it written all over, over, over his back? And again, it's such a poetic line. It's a poetic line. It's a beautiful line that, uh, that you realize that Odo was giving you the respect by being who he is and saying, well, I'm not going to change my character for this guy, but that's a sense of respect. Um, Armin, look, I, I can't thank you how much you, you you and the crew mean to us. Even all these years later, at the age of 40, I still love Star Trek. But it's because of the people like yourselves who um, did something very, very special in the late 90s. I I think it's because you, have, you bring all these great characters to life. You have great workers. You have great writers. And everyone works together. But I was curious to ask you, mate, why do you think something like DS9 has such a cult following? Why do people adore it? Is it the characters, you, Garrick, and so forth? But what is it, what is it that makes us so hooked? I, I think it's several things. First of all, uh, thank you for everything you just said and my admiration, love, is what it is, love for Renee, who is playing Odo. Uh, yes. Through. Uh, the writer saw the, the bromance that Renee and I had and just put that into the writing as well. Right. That was easy to do. So, but what makes our show uh, uh, interesting to people? First, Star Trek offers hope. Uh, all the episodes offer hope. It's about that humanity will somehow overcome uh, its problems and move on to a higher level. So that's part of it. But that's an easy answer. As far as Deep Space Nine, I think what what people didn't like about our show at the beginning is its saving grace. What you're talking about is that it wasn't about going to some planet every episode and saving their world from themselves. Mm. It was, and if you saw our panel, uh, I think Terry talked about this, and mm. it's worth reiterating, which is that we were about, or maybe it was Jeff who said it, that um, we were about exploring relationships between people, yeah. and people who didn't necessarily like each other. You know, Quark and Oda were meant not, on the surface, not to like each other but overcame those hurdles and learned to respect each other, as you just said, and, and to come together. And even though there were still rough edges where they, you know, with the ground mm -hmm. against each other, they still had great respect, great love for each other because they were stuck in the middle of space, yeah. on a space station. There was nowhere to go and they had to live together. They had to do that. And otherwise they would despair. And, and, and Shakespeare, Shakespeare, excuse me, uh, Star Trek has never been about despair. It's been about hope. Um, so I think that's what it is. And I think the reason our show stands up to the time is that, you know, those other science fiction shows, the, the, the shows were miraculous at the time, and they were science fiction about looking at the future. The problem is, as time goes by, the future becomes the present. We have those things that they, that they talked about and, 
And now we can do that. We don't have we don't have warp drive and we don't have uh, beaming in. But a lot of the other things we do have. Mm. So it becomes that becomes all to have. But the ideas of of working through interpersonal relationship yes. that's universal. That's been around for centuries. I mean, it always has to be the, the very final line in um, The Next Generation when Q says to Picard, the answer is the exploration of the stars, is the exploration of the mind. And the idea is mind, understanding who we are as a people. You can take all those, I like this, it's like you said, you can take all those subtle episodes about what they are about, but they're about human interactions and about how we deal with each other's problems. And they're the same problems that we face today, which is why I think we love the idea of watching it. Oh, how did Quark and Garrick come across their their bitterness oh that's how they dealt with it you know things like that and, and it can but it can only ever been uh executed by by actors who really understood their story and really had a passion for it and i want, want you to know from the bottom of my heart down here that you did that with such finesse my friend and you should never always go away proud of what you created not just with quark but with your other characters it was because of your ability to act, Armin. And, and I, I did get you to sign my little Quark's bar thing, which arrived a little while ago. And I'm very grateful for that, mate. And as I am very grateful to you for the wonderful role you had as Quark. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's satisfying when you do TV, unlike the theater. In the theater, you know immediately whether the audience likes what you're doing. It's immediate. You can, yes. The audience is quiet in that, you know, in the dark, we can hear them. We can hear yes. them really well. Yes, um, you never know that from TV, and and certainly my character, uh, which had the furthest to go in order to get people behind him, um, uh, I'm very satisfied and very grateful for what you just said. Even these many years later, and I've certainly heard it before, but uh, you know I, there was a great hurdle for for me to play Quark to get people to say what you just said, and and, and one last thing about the I think the glories of our show. Is, yes, sir. As much as I respect all the actors who are on the other shows, and they're very fine actors, very fine actors, but I'm prejudiced. I believe the actors that we had, not just the series regulars, but the recurring characters and the guest stars, were phenomenal quality of actors. And so every one of those people, when they came on the set, all of us had to work our games better. We had to, we had to perform at the top of our game. I look at Avery books. I mean, I would think one of the hardest things you can ever do as a as a captain of, of Star Trek is to somehow follow in the footsteps of people like Kirk, which, which, which obviously Patrick Stewart did so well. But then to come and say, following Patrick's footsteps, Avery just picked it up. And Avery did his own thing. If you notice that, Avery just said, I'm not going to be a Picard. I'm going to be Avery Brooks. And he ended up going down this wonderful line as Cisco. And you're right. You guys had, you had that independence to explore what you wanted, but you made it your own and you all got on. And we, we love you for it. It's 40 years later. There's a lot of garbage on TV these days, but we always come back to shows like yours because you, you highlight how you can act, how you can do it, how you immerse yourself in a character. As a 40-year-old, I'm a GP. I'm a 40-year-old. If I have to ever prescribe things to people that will make them happy before the medication, I'm going to send them to, play, to the 1990s, to Star Trek and stuff like that. that that's, what, that's what really works. That's what really works. You watch a show where people... Uh, troubled, yet they come together, they have to unify to overcome things, but you learn to love the characters. It gives you this grand perspective on life and how can you not have that perspective and how can you worry about your little things in life when you can appreciate what we have here in the arts with you guys? Well, we all have to live together. We have to learn how to live together. We may yes, sir. As, pro as problems or not seeing each other eye to eye. We certainly have that problem right now in, our, in the States right now. Yes, but, sir. But we have to learn to live together or we will perish. Correct. Correct. And it's remarkable, I, I won't go on and on, but it's remarkable that when we are in times of war, or we, are, we are in times of distress, we do unify a lot more uh, smoothly than we would normally, and then we break away, and we break away. Uh, nothing's gained by this. But if it's anything that's going to do that, then potentially it's the arts, it's the media, it's the it's the statues, it's the ornaments, it's, it's what we do as humans that will in, entail us to bring us together. So look, keep keep being the wonderful leader that you are in your field. I, it's an absolute pleasure. When I had the opportunity to come on and speak to you, I jumped at it. I've always wanted to tell you about those two little episodes because when you when you did do those roles, your mannerisms and everything you had going for you it made me feel like this, this is a brother, this guy. He really cares. So thank you so much, Armin. And thank you. I wish you all the best for the future and I hope to see you in Australia one day, my friend. 
I, I will be back sometime and we'll shake hands then. I hope so. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. You too. Bye-bye. I think they're going to keep us on for another 18 seconds. So. Uh, oh, okay. 18 more seconds. Do you have a favorite episode you can tell me about? Uh, far Beyond the Stars for the very thing that we've been talking about. Exactly. Exactly. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And if, if you don't cry by the end of it, then you mustn't be a human being, let alone a Star Trekkie. You got you guys did such a great job with that with that with that episode, absolutely beautiful. Cisco's final monologue, oh. absolutely brilliant, brilliant. All right, take care, Anthony. Thanks, Armin. Bye. -bye.